the purple python picture um i mean back from alpha days uh, i used to get together in person with um the, the stabler brothers who are also around during alpha and, and head over to wales to their place and, and what we do is rig up the computers next to each other and back before the external camera we used to um look out through the top of the sidewinder so use the the, the track ir and look upwards and then i'd line them up above the ship so that i can get a good picture and do astrophotography that way obviously when we got the external camera it became a lot easier um yeah, yeah. and as soon as we started getting things like the paint packs and, and some of the new stellar objects you know these these neutron stars and all sorts they were perfect locations for some beautiful pictures and I always wanted one of those sort of very tall pictures, not a, not a, not a widescreen like your monitor, but a, a tall picture. Because, you yeah, know, the Python being quite a, a long ship, especially it when you sort of line yeah. it up at an angle. Yeah. And I wanted to get one with one of those wavy arms in the background so that you had the almost like a sort of Star Wars intro picture. It's, it's a real film poster of an image. Yeah, isn't absolute. It? Yeah, film poster special. Um, so it took me a long time to get that one lined up. And. I uh, wanted you know the light just right on the top of the ship and getting it lined up took an age especially with those sort of god rays or whatever they're called you know the sort of random rays coming out of the star highlighting yes. them. so that, that vertical stripe down the middle of the page there from the sort of the the, the beam of light coming down was, was an important thing to get um but i got the image and it's just it's one of my favorites it's fantastic i do think it's a lovely it, it's a lovely composition because it's it's got kind of that weight and that that almost uh, i don't know i don't want to say biblical but you know it's got that kind of that light shining from above because we're used to seeing stars above so that the fact that the star is right at the top shining down and, and wavy arm things going on yeah and obviously the, the 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 color choice for the star with the color choice for the ship were, were important as well in that you know you could have gone with a bright yellow one or or some other you know the standard paint job but that color of the ship with with the um the body kit on as well which gives it a bit more of an angular look to it yeah yeah um but the choice of colors to go with a star it, it yeah. makes it wider it makes it quite chunky because i was thinking well that's not that actually that's much bigger than i'm yeah and i had to sort of, i made the, the picture lighter so i could see and that actually then i realized the python was taking a lot more space than i thought it would be because of your body kit that you got on it yeah, and, and those little winglets on the corners. When you look from the yeah. rear of the ship, I've got a great one in front of a star as well. You, you're, you're getting that sort of almost like X shape at the back of it, like some sort of um, one of these puppetry shows. I can't remember the name of it. There was an old marionette. Sort of marionettes, you know, some of the space shows. You know, you're thinking sort of Terror Hawks. And, oh, yeah. You know, it, it's got that kind of a look on the back of the ship with the ship kit on it. That is, yeah. I, I mean, I love doing it because I love the vibrant, the vibrant intensity of the light in it. It was just amazing doing that, that harsh glare shining off the top. Yeah, that really was yes. good and really enjoyed it. So, And also painting, and I don't do painting that, that often, really. No, And, of course, it had to be purple. Of course, it had to be purple. Um, well, when, when I started um, playing the game, as I've done with a few other games in the past, um, sort of a bit, bit of a story behind it, the naming of the ship, but also the colours on the ship, all my ships are purple. Back when I started my business, oh, crikey, 20, 23 years ago, um, we decided that we needed a sort of a wise head to help us bunch of youngsters start up our business. So we we recruited a lovely, lovely, lovely lady, um, late 60s, early 70s, age-wise, but had a lifetime of experience. So that's what we needed as a bunch of young guys. And Auntie Val um, was a legend. And for, for years and years, she was an absolute legend in the office. Um, she had three screens on her desk. The customers adored her. She used to bake rum cakes. Uh, customers had come around in the afternoon to, to eat these rum cakes. <laughs> they wanted meetings in the afternoon so they could have one of Val's rum cakes. Okay. These things, you could almost see the alcohol boiling <laughs> off the surface of them. Uh, she'd been widowed for, what, about 25 years, um, but was everybody's mum. Wonderful. Everybody's spare mum. Everyone needs and, one of them. <laughs> um, yeah. But, I mean, the customers adored her. We adored her. And um, she she wore purple. I mean, she, she wore purple a lot. She was the office shady lady. I mean, there are photographs of her in black and white from, you know, many, many years ago. And she stood on the back of a motorcycle like some stunt display team as it jumps through a fiery hoop. And I've got black and white photographs of her from back then. I mean, this this lady was a legend. And uh, yeah, she always wore purple, you know, whether it was a purple scarf or it was a little purple brooch, but purple was always there. And you know, everybody, everybody knew it, but unfortunately, oh, a few years back now, cracky, when my, my son was, he's 12 now, and uh, when my son was one, two, um, she collapsed one day in the warehouse at the office. And there had been some funny things going on. Like she said, oh, my keyboard's not working. And we, we thought nothing about it. She collapsed in the office and had a scan and, and had unfortunately um, an aggressive brain tumor, which, which claimed her life, unfortunately, very, very quickly. And we were all a bit heartbroken that Auntie Val had um, passed away. It was the centre of the, um, the hub of the office, as it were. 
Oh, absolutely. A total legend. And um, yeah, we all, and she'd be my landlady for a bit as well. So when I moved up to Birmingham, when we started the company up there, she, you know, she'd put me up for a year while I was looking for a place to live. And she just was the most glorious, glorious lady. So um, in computer games going forwards, you know, I've, I've sort of as a bit of a, a tribute, a personal thing for me, you know, the ships are purple. Um, and the name of my ship is always the Shady Lady in, in memory of Auntie Val. Oh, that's um, wonderful. So they're all purple now, the, the funny thing well she she was and i know it's a silly thing to commemorate so many computer games but i remember talking to her about the earliest computers long conversations about you know the old bbc micros and commodore 64s and um she loved computers i mean even even at you know well into her 70s when when, when she left us and yeah so purple's the thing and it makes it much more meaningful when you've got your ships and they've got that purple glint in them and it gives you, brings you probably a little bit of a happy memory. Oh, crikey. I'm flying through the Milky Way, right? I'm visiting stars and planets. I'm exploring the universe. And, you know, a little bit of Val's memory is coming with me every single time I do that. It just makes me feel warm and, you know, fuzzy about it. Um, oh, that's fantastic. The funny thing is, I'm colorblind. <laughs> and what colors can you see? So, you can see blue. Well, unfortunately, a yeah, purple, I'm not picking up the red in it, so, but the purple looks blue. So as far as I'm concerned, what you've painted for me might be called the purple uh -huh. python, but it's actually blue. Right. <laughs> I've painted a blue space.